Discuss anything on the uh, proposed 2008 budget? Anyone? I have to ask one more time. Yes. Here yeah, please come here. Up here, identify yourself and. Sure. My name is Dave Sellison. Um, I live on 1616 Summer Street. Uh, my wife and three young kids. And um, we, I guess I wanted to talk to you about, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody here for the time that they give. I think I talked community. to your wife on the telephone, right? You may have. I you may have I gotten have. some emails. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have a concern, uh, as, I, as I think a lot of uh, citizens here do, about the security around, or maybe not here, but in the city, um, the security around uh, EP Rock School with all the uh, crime events that have been happening. And, um, uh, you know, we've lived there for 14 years. Um, the kids have been involved in a couple of lockdowns at school. Know, things like that and uh, we started a neighborhood watch about three years ago two years ago two or three years ago and uh, so we've been talking with a lot of our neighbors and there's a great deal of concern in that neighborhood um, you've got parents my age with young kids that uh, are concerned um, you've got older folks that are very concerned um, got a neighbor that won't even go out to check her mail. <laughs> I'm not sure that we're to the point where the sky's falling down, but um, I guess you know we'd like to respectfully ask that um, our police department be given everything possible in the short term to whether it be computers in the cars or uh, anything they need to help uh, make them safer and to help uh, the officers that are there to be better able to do their job more efficiently. Uh, I know there's constraints. Uh, there always is. Um, but I guess, you know, we feel, and a lot of our neighbors feel, that the most fundamental thing that government can do for us is provide us security. And as I said, we've lived there for 14 years. I travel 70 miles to and from work but we live here, and we love this community, and um, you know that's that's beginning to fray in our own household. Um, you know, there's conversation. Well, why don't we move out further, move away from the highway, move here, move there? Um, but we don't want to do that, and I guess that's the reason I'm here. That's the reason my wife wrote emails and talked to the mayor, and we've talked to some other folks. We're concerned. We know those in our watch are concerned. A lot of our other neighborhoods are very concerned. Our neighbors in our neighborhood are very concerned. And um, as I said, we'd like to respectfully ask that uh, there be reconsideration on anything that, that the police department needs in the short term. And in the long term, um, I know it's an issue with taxes. But I, I don't think that this is a conservative, liberal issue. I think we all need security, want security. And um, I'm not sure, you know, if, if, if it meant additional taxes, I'm not sure you'd get as much of the um, negative response as you think you would get. So, you know, we would respectfully ask that maybe to put the city on some type of a schedule to have a referendum and, and move on from there. Okay. But I think just putting it on a schedule is going to make a lot of people feel better. So we appreciate your comments. Thank Unfortunately, you. Unfortunately, we have restrictions on the amount that we can increase our budget. And Madison didn't finish their budget in time no, for us to have a referendum. So we're kind of yeah. we're kind of caught between a hard no, spot that, that, and a rock. That's understood, Mayor. Um, you know, short term, our thought is maybe there could be some things. You know, I, I, I guess you weigh it. What's more important? Is what we're paying for here more important than? You know, making our officers uh, more efficient. We understand the referendum issue is a long-term issue, and, and that's why I separated that. Um, I understand. But maybe to put it on some type of a timeline may help um, to allay some of the concerns that are out there. 
Well, what do you mean by a timeline? Well, when you know when could we have a referendum? It's 2009. 2009. Well, the end of 2008 then, for 2009. Yeah. Okay. For the budget year, it has to be a full budget year. Sure. Yeah, so. okay. And we're certainly going to look at that particular avenue. Okay. Unfortunately, it was too late this year. No, that's understood. And the, you know the the committees have worked very hard in establishing our budget today. Sure, well, that's understood. Scott, do you have uh, a comment? I would like to add one comment to perhaps illustrate that we understand your feelings on this. The uh, general operating budget is com 36 of it is, is percent of it is comprised of police, ambulance, and fire, mm -hmm. and uh, that's proposed for 2000. Eight. Okay. But there will be some increases in the budget over last year, and police, ambulance, and fire, although they comprise 36% of our budget, are getting 68% of the increases. Okay. Right. So we are paying attention to this issue. Okay. I had um, one of the things I, I heard was this uh, fairly significant concern in this area, and I, I heard it someplace else also. I'd like to take that to safety and have Eric report at our next meeting, if possible, what kinds of concerns there are here and what we can do. If we put that on the agenda to look at. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? Need a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's already. Let's go to our regular uh, meeting and we'll call the meeting to order and would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk take the roll please. Mayor Rowe. Here. District 1 Morset. Here. Two Here. Three Rademacher. Here. Four Weiland. Here. Five O'Malley. Here. Six Virtual. Here. At this point in our agenda, we take comments and suggestions from citizens present on any item not on the agenda. Anyone want to speak to the council? Anyone? Mr. Knutson. Dean Knutson, 1753 Laurel Avenue. And I came in response to uh, something that was in the paper this week that talked about our city leaders don't have courage, don't have tenacity, and aren't willing to sacrifice. And I'd like to say that I think everyone appreciates that. It does take courage to sit where you're sitting and make decisions, balancing conflicting priorities, and Thank you for the time that you've put in and for the courage you've shown and the sacrifice that you've made. Appreciate the comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay, let's go to the consent agenda items. Um, Madam Clerk will verbalize those for us, please. To approve the regular meeting minutes of November 5th, 2007. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $569,812.32. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the issuance of one regular operator's license for the period November 20th, 2007 through June 30th, 2009. Additional information is available in the clerk's office on request. To place on file the quarterly reports of the Community Development Director, Police Department, and Water Utility Director. That is all. Go ahead. Move for approval. Second. Roll call vote, please. Morset? Yes. O'Malley? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Virgil? Yes. Rademacher? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, let's go to the Finance Committee, application of Ragman Incorporated for Class B beer and Class C wine license. Cafe at 840 Carmichael Road. Mayor, I need to recuse myself from this okay. issue. Move for approval. Second. Uh, any discussion? I'd like to have uh, the owners of Keys come up to the uh, podium and just give us the, an executive summary on the uh, highlights of Keys. Thank you very much for having us and uh, letting us hopefully come to your community. Very proud to be part of Hudson. This is my wonderful wife, Amy. My name's Roy, and we're, we live over in Minnesota right now. My mother has a lake cabin up by Turtle Lake. 
who are hoping to become part of Wisconsin. And there's not many restaurants that have dual state status, and we're we're proud to uh, be one of one of the couple that do. Well, we welcome you to Hudson, and we know your reputation, and we have enjoyed your food, and uh, thank you for considering Hudson and coming here. It's a great uh, privilege for us to have you here. We're excited to be here. Any comments, Council? Except we're all going to go in there and eat. Okay. Of course. I, I hope you do. <laughs> okay. Thank you very you much. Thank and you. And good luck to you. <laughs> all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to application of Applebee's Restaurants North LLC for Class B beer and Class B liquor license. Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar at 2201 uh, Cooley Road. Lice I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. License currently held by Gourmet Systems of Minnesota. I'm sorry. I thought I heard a period oh, that's there. Okay. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. I think I'm going to skip and go to a park board presentation of the school forest project uh, proposal because they uh, have a presentation that they'd like to uh, discuss with us, and then we'll go back to public works after that. Is that okay, Scott? Sure. Get the, the technical uh, people up here. Oh, there they are. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, they can pick you up on the... But give her the uh, mic. Whoever's presenting. Okay. She's off screen. Yes. Did you get some? Yeah, he's already... It's the whole thing here? Yeah, it's the whole thing. Could you have a stand here so she be on camera? Ma'am, could you stand here, please, so you could be on camera? Okay. Stand in the, between these two tables. Okay, great. Right, right over there. there. Is now you're on camera. See, now you're on camera. <laughs> Thank you. Your TV debut. <laughs> and then who should I present to you and let them? Why don't you face the camera? Why don't you face the camera? We'll yeah. be able to read along with yeah, you. Yeah, we, we can Our, watch you up here. Yeah. Don't okay. don't okay. worry about us. Hi, I'm Miss Landers, City Landers at the Hudson Middle School, and I came to Life Science. And I also have a young bachelor's uh, club at the school. Thank you. So I want to be able to read this at the same time. So, am I okay here? Yep. Okay. Just southeast of Hudson Middle School. is a little educational opportunity. It's a small forested parcel of land tucked away near community trails, schools, and ballparks. It's waiting to be discovered, explored, and tended. It's the perfect place for a school forest. I'm gonna adjust this. That didn't help. Oh. <laughs> Wisconsin has a long proud school forest tradition boasting over 350 registered school sites uh, we argue with Minnesota who had the first one and of course Wisconsin did 
Um, this is a proposal to partner with the city of Hudson to create a Hudson Middle School forest. So what's in this presentation tonight? We'll define a school forest and share its benefits. We'll have a site description. We'll talk about the benefits to the community. Any educational opportunities, site development and management ideas, and the registration process of the school forest and uh, proposed timeline. And lastly, the main targets or the proposed targets. School forests are parcels of land developed and managed by a school forest board of directors. The goal is to provide a place for outdoor education, service learning, and connections with nature. Our site description right here in the little, in this city of Hudson, this little parcel of land. Um, it's uh, currently being used um, as a, it has a crisscross of trails and it's an ideal site for educational um, environmental ed. And currently the trails are used for sightseeing, recreation, people walk their dogs there and uh, cross country runs there and the football teams also work out in that site. The site description, um, we have a DNR forester that's already come out and taken a look at it. And we um, have tree species, red pine, jack pine, box elder, cottonwood, aspen, elm, red maple, and oak. Scotch pine and willow are also present. And there's a small lake that sits on the northern uh, part of the land. Our proposal or my ideas for the school forest, not only to provide education for the students, but to community members um, with um, addition, a place for uh, cooperative stewardship where the steward students can work with the city and um, take care of a piece of the city. Here's some photos of the site. Uh, we have, a, again, high diversity of plant life. Thank you. Some berries. That's the small pond. That's the hill where the football players and cross country run. How can the community benefit from this? Uh, we're looking at considering um, putting informal education opportunities with signs so that people can walk through and get learn about the area and the different um, ecosystems. People can walk past interesting bits of nature, perhaps hundreds of times, and they show little, um, they don't know very much about them, and so a sign could help them um, understand and see more. So signs provide an often overlooked means to educate students and citizens about the interesting world we live in. Signs can help people understand intricate interrelationships within an ecosystem. And members of the public can learn to appreciate the different habitats, such as ponds, marshes, forests, and the accompanying flora and fauna of the natural world. Students can even play a part in creating the signs. Here's where some of my students have done some community service, um, working with the Rotary. And uh, we did a shoreline um, cleanup here on the St. Croix. But it's a place to provide stewardship within the community. Students and community members can cooperate to solve problems and improve an ecosystem. Educational opportunities. Today's youth are future leaders, and um, they're going to help develop our policies and make decisions that will impact our world. School Forest will provide a place for innovative outdoor learning and play to encourage and inspire students from every age and background through positive outdoor activities. <laughs> Children who play life discern its true law and relations more clearly than men who fail to live it worthily, but who think they are all the wiser by the experience. That's um, David Thoreau. Henry Thoreau got it right 150 years ago. Children learn better when they are actively engaged in learning, and he knew that there was no better place than nature to stimulate this kind of learning. They're sucking bugs into bug jars there. <laughs> they can learn general science, conducting investigations, solving problems, analyzing and interpreting data.
They can learn animal science, identifying organisms, behavior, food webs, predators, and environmental threats. Plant science, learning flora, field research, and inventory and monitor populations of native species while controlling the spread of evasive or non-native species. Earth science, they can read and create maps, um, identify geographic features, test soil, identify erosion, which is an issue out there, and um, test possible solutions. They can especially learn uh, environmental science, learning the life cycles, conducting population studies, discovering relationships between members of a community, understand conservation principles, and understand the future environmental responsibilities. Environmental education is best when infused through direct hands-on experience and capturing teachable moments. This is what we've used the forest for in my class for tree identification. We I have identified the macro invertebrates of the pond, and then we've also tested for um, nutrient pollution, uh, nature scavenger hunts. Here's our ideas for improving the Hudson Middle School forest um, to improve a trail system throughout the different stands, wooded stands create um, and add interpretive signs with educational messages, and lighting, enlightening visitors of the habitats, natural systems, biodiversity, and threats to the ecosystem. Construct a dock on the pond, allowing easy access to water for the groups to conduct water studies. Provide tables for students to have a place to sit and record their data. Management ideas, um, shoreline restoration on one side so it's easier to get down to the pond. Um, we've done a shoreline restoration my club has out at Perch Lake, and um, it helps improve um, erosion problems. It was really cold that day. <laughs> This is the slope on the um, west side, and this is where I would like to plant a prairie, deep-rooted plants, so that it would uh, control erosion. We have plenty of buckthorn, little honeysuckle, some other um, invasive species, and that would be something that we'd want to do is control some of the invasive species. This is part of the erosion problem. It's all down the south slope. And um, it says north slope, but it's the south slope. And um, it goes north. But I've already had an erosion control specialist out there looking at some of the opportunities for us to control that problem. The, set, the pond is filling up with sediment right now. So who's going to manage this forest? The forest board, um, the school forest board, will facilitate any management practices and the community members will be involved in the management practices, including students, local organizations, and citizens. This is the pond we put in next to our school, and it just shows where um, if you involve community members and the students, um, you can combine all of our strengths, and that's a good opportunity towards um, sustainable community when we all work together on projects. So how are we going to pay for all these improvements? There are innumerable grants available through environmental conservation, especially when children and community members are involved together to promote community sustainability. Benefits of registering it as a school forest, the first thing is, is we can tap into the $200,000 in grants available through the Wisconsin Environmental Ed Board. Um, we get free forest management assistance from the Department of Natural Resources free trees and seeds from the state nurseries. And it's an opportunity to demonstrate um, local resource concerns. Water concerns are a major part of our state and um, invasive species and land management. Strengthen school community relations and provide service learning opportunities for our youth. So how do we register a school forest? 
First, we sent up a land agreement use. The landowners agree to enter a land use agreement with Hudson School District. The school board must adopt a resolution to dedicate the parcel as a school forest. Organize a school forest board of directors. Several local professionals have expressed interest in being on the board. We currently have a DNR forester, a wildlife biologist, hydrologist, two county land and water conservationists, um, five elementary, middle school, and high school teachers, a group of us right now. Then we need to come up with a forest education plan. Um, this is important for documenting how a uh, document detaining, determining how our education goals match with the curriculum of the school district. Then we develop a school uh, forest management plan created by, with the assistance of the DNR forester. Um, we'll incorporate educational objectives of the school district as well. So here's the big picture um, to give awareness of local, regional, and global environmental issues along with time spent learning outdoors. It's going to help greatly influence the development of environmental sensitivity and environmental responsible behavior in humans. Um, it's going to help people identify and assess regional ecosystems within a school forest property, allowing for active student participation in the ecosystems, sustained management, and restoration. So that's like the, the big picture. Lifetime outdoor recreational activities, they promote a healthy lifestyle decisions by um, promoting f lifestyle decisions by promoting fitness and in and within your um, environment. Here's the timeline I'm proposing. December 2007, create the board. January 2008, submit the first initial grant request, $5,000 to create the educational uh, plan completed by um, 2008. Uh, March 2008, solidify the forest management plan. Um, March 2008, submit conservation plan to the NRCS for support. Um, they can give offer support in helping us manage the conservation parts of the uh, forest. And then December 2008, submit um, for the $20,000 uh, implementation grant that would get us started on our signs and our trails and our management. Not everything that can be counted counts. Not everything that counts can be counted. Nobody understands what it means for a student to go out in the wildlife and in the nature and enjoy um, just listening to water and following a bug. Uh, kids don't get out that much anymore. Um, they sit at their computers. They play their games. They watch TV. They go to soccer and ballet, and you know they go everywhere so quickly. Um, they don't get to just sit and, and watch and play in nature. Uh, Place-based learning is, is very important. Experiential learning encourages the students to change from passive learners to self-motivated learners and assertive action takers. So support the school forest project and promote a better community. I added some slides real quick at the end. Um, I started a school. Um, there's a garden that's right outside of our school, and it was pretty bare at one point. Um, we put in the five trees, and then since then, this was 2005 we established this, and so you can click right on through. Just to show you that um, I am an action taker, we, we're putting in a pond right here uh, through grants. Now there's, there's the, this is the wildlife side, and then we have the pond on the other side. We have a rain garden. We have a rose garden. Um, we had an Eagle Scout project with birdhouses and the arboretum. And there's our pond, which now has a bridge. We had a group of girls create a bridge for it. Um, yeah. A great outdoor learning area. Any questions? Where's this parcel of land at? That you're talking. Did you get a map? It's yeah, but I can't. <clears throat> east of the new yeah, playground area. Yeah. You know where the new playground area is? Yep. 
right in there. Just a little bit north where that woods is. Okay, right in here. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, goes like. Has anybody uh, yeah. identified the uh, size of that plot? Um, can you hear me now? It, it's it's about eight eight acres or so. The city owns it. Um. That's the controversial thing because I think our football field is owned by the city, which is right next to the school, and then just beyond that is school district land, and so it's kind of a big mix. I think there's a shared relationship. Denny, do we know who owns that, or is Denny here? Yeah. I'd have to research that. I, I suspect that the city probably owns part of it. Part of it may be even under private ownership with the housing development to the east, but we can sort that out. The question that I have... And and I, I think it's a wonderful program, but I, I wonder if you have to have ownership before you can receive grants. The, it, we wouldn't have to actually have ownership. Um, so say the city owned it, they would just go into a land use agreement, which they could rescind. Yeah, at least sounds a little bit more um, official. This is more um, like you could rescind or step out of the agreement. It's it's a little bit lighter than a lease situation. And who's going to put all that information together so we can interpret that? Oh, I would write the okay. agreement. And I think I sent down a copy of it. It's an old yeah, one. I, it, I got it from that, the yeah. school forest in Stevens Point. Um, but I would I would put that together and then present it. But we do need to find out, you know, who, where the land ownership. I think actually the the town of Hudson owns the little section of the there's that like corner. Right, yeah, and I think that it's it'd be the east side and like there's car, old cars and old trucks down there. I don't know if anybody's seen those down there. So there's like there's a site that's just kind of. But the concept was okayed by the park board. That's correct. The park board recommends approval uh, because the the city would or the it would. Re main in the park system that doesn't change number one and number two uh, there's a caveat place that uh, they'd make the forest board would make a presentation to the park board in the city once a year to say we're going to do a b c and d this year so we can approve Will the it park board say, have anybody on their school board of directors that was a suggestion as well yeah i we think have, that's we have a city representative um, but that they, that they would make a presentation, say we want to accomplish, you know, one, two, three, four, and five this well, year. Yeah, I think it's an excellent idea. Yeah, we I just have to identify the path of approach. Correct. Well, I think there is a good indication, Mr. Mayor, the land use agreement that Douglas County gave to uh, a school in the county. Uh, actually, it's just a land use permit, and the permit, as it says on the back, becomes effective on a certain date, and remains effective until the person who owns the land decides to end it which would be us and our, our, our park system at any time, so we're not giving over control or ownership of the land to anyone. Well, that's Correct. what we did with that ball field, too, and I haven't seen any involvement with the city on that particular agreement at all. Except when we have to pay for half the sidewalks and the assessments. So I want to make sure that this thing is clear and concise and that it makes sense to uh, the people who own it, basically the citizens of Hudson. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's a great idea, though. Yeah, yeah. super idea. Fantastic. I think it's such a unique park-like setting that I, I, I imagine families would really like the opportunity to take their children through a walk of the woods right in the, the middle of town. I appreciate mm -hmm. you taking the initiative to bring it forth. You're welcome. And, uh, Bring the details to the park board and us, and we'll cooperate in any way we can. Thank you very much. All right. Thank oh, you. I can't forget this. this. The students each wanted to make a little talk for you. Now the technical people will appear. I'll let them introduce themselves. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cheyenne. Oh, is this on? I'm Cheyenne, and I think we should get the forest because we could plant trees and watch them grow and develop, and they would be here for a longer time than we would. And also, in recent studies, it says that people who have a window in their hospital room, they heal faster than people who are just staring, staring at blank walls. Mr. Moore said, is the mic on? I think so. Let's do that. It doesn't it's look on. like the light is on there. It's on. Yeah, it's on. Hello. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We want to make sure the TV audience hears you. Okay. Um, everyone in my class is always excited to go outside for class, and 
when we, if we have this, then we'll have more of an opportunity to do that. And then I think we're always inside, like, watching TV or playing with electronics, so it would be better if we went outside and got some fresh air. And then um, going outside would be getting a be better visual than in a textbook. And then, um, yeah. <laughs> and then I, it personally helps me learn when I'm outside and it's fresh air instead of being, like, in a room. So, and I'm Savannah Lida. I never <laughs> said that. Brandy, have you got your camera? Brandy, <laughs> got your camera? Hi, I'm Maggie Viator, and I think the school should keep the land. It would be a positive influence for most kids. I think the forest area is quite beautiful, and would be I would be grateful to help with it. The forest would be a hands-on learning experience, and almost all the kids not prefer an activity that involves touching and moving things around. Hi, my name is Kay Obieski, and I am a member of Young Naturalists. I think that we should have the forest and pond because I remember even in back in elementary school, we used to go down by the pond and take notes about what we would see, about what we could see and hear. We could also take in bugs and leaves and examine them closer under a microscope. I think that the pond is a great place to relax and have a breath of fresh air. The forest is a great place to learn and have fun at the same time. We should take advantage of the nature and wilderness we are fortunate enough to have. Thank you. We're getting a camera to take a picture of everyone so that we can get a little publicity in the paper if Randy will cooperate. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a camera, okay. Randy. Jack, I can. one thing we do want to make sure, you know, that is a stormwater utility area. So any type of improvements have to be made with that in mind that Absolutely. we can coexist as stormwater and, and uh, school forest. So That's why I think we should have somebody on the uh, board of directors. And that's, that's just a formality. <coughs> I hope there's batteries in the camera. Who's got them? Want to continue with another subject and we'll wait? Let's go to the Public Works Committee and uh, Devin can take your picture uh, when he gets back, okay? Uh, Henry Road uh, Walkway. Oh, here Would you go. like to do this first? Or? Oh, we got the camera. <coughs> Randy, that's kind of, uh, kind of like making a business call with no calling cards, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. He'll get me next week. <laughs> Everybody else has. <laughs> You can take the shot. <laughs> okay, while they're doing that, let's take the Hanley Road walkway, uh, Mr. Scott. This evening, the Public Works Committee voted on the four alternatives for uh, increasing the walking path or, or sidewalk area on Hanley Road. Uh, you may recall that some uh, time back, about a year and a half ago, we appropriated $40,000 for just this project. And because Public Works was so busy with other projects, particularly road repair and mill and overlay this past year, we didn't get to it. Uh, this is a perfect time, though, for the surveyors to uh, survey exactly how it's going to go in uh, because the leaves are off the trees and the paths are, the pathway is clear. Uh, we uh, met Denny uh, Darnold and, and uh, Mr. Schwartz from BRI, BRA and uh, Denny Christopherson from the water utility that I met on. Uh, a breezy cold morning up there to uh, walk over the properties and we uh, came up they came up with uh, four different plans uh, council members you'll see uh, they're labeled a b c and d what we chose or what we recommend to the council in public works is alternative d which is alternative c which is 
an eight foot wide pathway on the south side of Hanley Road from the east end of Hanley Green Development, which is where the existing pathway as it goes eastward ends. We would extend that to Nemacagan Street and to connect to the north side of Hanley at Nemacagan. And there on the north side, we would establish a concrete sidewalk. Now, the difference between these two is that the walkway is eight feet wide and the sidewalk is five feet wide, and on, all the utilities are on the north side of Hanley. So we have to have a narrower pathway, if you will, so that we can avoid running into all those utilities, and the five-foot wide sidewalk fills that bill in, in perfectly. So this would allow for 10 disability pedestrian ramps for easy access for everyone on every driveway, every street intersection. Uh, it would connect to Aldi Foods parking lot and um, then pedestrians could choose to uh, move across the parking lot or, or whatever they care to do at that point to access Carmichael Road. It will not access Carmichael at the intersection with Hanley, but there seems to be little point in doing that because if you would want to do that if you wanted to proceed further eastward on Hanley, and there is no sidewalk to the east of Carmichael to do that on. This will cost $42,900. We have $54,000 for this project. Uh, we have added a, uh, uh, an amount less than $5,000 to add to this alternative number D a survey, extend the survey work west to O'Keefe so in future we can continue the walking path to O'Keefe. Dennis, this is your district. Is there anything you'd like to add to what I've just said? No, just so the um, people on TV, when we develop the corner up there where all these is, all the, the walking path right now is currently on the south side because of the utilities on the north side. But proposal D does give us, there'll be a crosswalk at Foxglove to cross to the sidewalk. There'll be a sidewalk on the north side from Foxglove to Aldi's so that people can at least walk up to the grocery store. And then the current path then will continue on the south side. So I'll make the motion that we choose alternative D with the addition of some additional survey work west to O'Keefe along the south side of Hanley. Second. Oh. Discussion. So Dennis, this, this does uh, take care of the concerns of the neighborhood there? Right. Well, the walking path, you know, in the future is going to have to keep going. And that's why we're taking the... Um, we. We're taking the survey out to O'Keefe, so we'll have the survey done to O'Keefe. And if you know the money, if the bids were to come in lower and we could keep going farther, we could go farther. But for right now, we'll do the survey out to O'Keefe. Um, the concerns I, I I recently got an email, and it actually ended up at Lee's. Somebody um, accidentally sent it to Lee or mis misunderstood who the representative was, but. Somewhere in the future, we might have to look at Foxglove because when you come out of Foxglove, the sidewalk ends, when you're coming north on Foxglove, it ends at the houses. And then where the, the new development is there on the on east side of Foxglove, there's no sidewalk. But for right now, the walking path is what we're concerned with right now. On but, Hanley. but under this this plan, we would have sidewalk from Fox Glove to <laughs> up to Aldi's parking lot. This concern, though, was right in front of the Hanley Office Park. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that yeah. Yeah. that email cover. I received yeah. today with concerns, basically from Hanley past Monterey Boulevard mm -hmm. to the south. Okay. I mean, that's something we would have to look at in the future. And to, re and to address that later question, the responsibility of putting that sidewalk is is Hanley Green's actually on the east side. So if we get a developer that comes in and wants to finish that project, that will be a condition of oh, approval. On the, oh, oh, okay. So just keep, well, that in, keep that in mind. I, well, that's nice to know that I can let that person know. Yeah. Okay. Any I'll, other questions? Well, I, if I just make Comments? one other comment, there's a possibility if these, bid, you know, these bids came in, what I suggest also suggesting and we'd look at if the bids come in low enough, we could have possibly extend the walkway all the way over to O'Keefe Road because yeah. we still have a strong possibility of being under the $54,000 budget that's been set for this. So, so there is that possibility if the bids come in low enough, if we bid that as an alternative, we could extend it even further. 
Do we need to make that part of the motion? To I don't think we need to at this time because we were, what we're approving right now is the survey to make that oh, make that possible should the bids come in that low. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. So the extension of sanitary sewer to Rivercrest Elementary School. Denny, we're still studying that? Uh, that was removed from the Public Works agenda. Specifications did not come in for staff review, so... Uh, hopefully the school district would like if we can get a public works meeting set up in December to take it up at that time. Okay, thank you. Lake Malibu stormwater assessment. Scott? Tonight Public Works uh, went over the draft of a very extensive report uh, that we received from uh, Rich at BRA. And I uh, hope you've had a chance to read it. It uh, gives us the first step in uh, the plan project that's been going on for some time. We received a grant from the uh, state of Wisconsin, $10,000. The city put in an additional $2,500 to complete this uh, study. Uh, the next step will be uh, getting the Lake Malu Association involved. Essentially, what we have discovered through the study so far and through the engineering work is that we are getting quite a bit of phosphorus and, and an awful lot of silt, sand, going into Lake Malu runoff from the city of Hudson. The shoreline of Lake Malibu, of course, is comprised mostly of land owned by the Township of Hudson and the village of North Hudson, but the city of Hudson, with a denser population, has um, more outlets into Lake Malibu, and those are what we're concerned about. We may need to replace an old or an aging uh, brick-and-mortar uh, system. We have, uh, uh, in one place, a newer uh, reinforced concrete pipe system that's doing very well, and probably looking at doing filtrations, of filtering this water before it gets to Lake Malibu and taking the sediment out. And uh, eventually we're going to have to go into some kind of public education process dealing with phosphorus and, and lawn fertilizer because that's what you see on the label of every, you know, nitrogen and phosphorus on your lawn fertilizer. So, so what action are you asking? None tonight. No action. This is an update to let you know that the $2,500 the city put forth has produced a good and usable product and we'll be taking the next steps with the Lake Malibu Association coming back to the council in the near future. And there's a copy of that uh, report uh, here at uh, yes. City Hall in case anyone wants Anyone who wants to, wants to, to can check it. Okay. Let's go to public safety. Consider removal of two parking spaces at River Street near 4th Street. For uh, Denny. Uh, there's some discussions um, at St. Patrick's School, um, Trinity Lutheran School, and Will River School on some safety issues in that area. Yeah. There were two uh, early recommendations that came out. Uh, one uh, request was made by the uh, bus company that uh, two off-street parking places on River Street, east of Fort Street on, in an, on the north side, uh, be removed immediately east of the stop sign uh, so the buses can turn. And the cars come all the way up to the stop sign and have a hard time making that turn in the afternoon when they're leaving. Uh, so what the uh, public safety recommendation is is to remove those two and sign it that uh, no parking from here to the uh, stop sign during school hours only, which I believe are 7.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. Otherwise, somebody could park in that area outside of the school hours. Uh -huh. I move that we uh, uh, approve the motion. Or second. Recommendation. <laughs> recommendation. Thank you. Second. Or second. <clears throat> second. Discussion. Uh, could I ask that we use the same wording that we use up at the high school, yeah. um, seven thirty to four thirty, when school is in session? Yeah. So that you know, Christmas vacation or summer holidays, uh, we don't have to worry about it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion's carried. And the next one is consider restricted parking on the north side of St. Croix Street between 4th and 5th. Again, that a, is a real problem. Again, a safety consideration is uh, uh, when the school addition was built, uh, it uh, took the school a little bit further to the east. Uh, safety committee is recommending removing approximately three off-street parking places on St. Croix Street on the north side from where the no parking sign is at over to the easterly to the St. Patrick School driveway and they need to be signed similar to the Will River School signs uh, parent drop off and pick up five minutes parking limit is what the signage says on Oak Street. Comments? Approval. 
I'll second. second. Discussion? Just to uh, be clear that the cost of signs will be paid by St. Patrick's School. That's correct. And I've made that clear to uh, Mary Pischewski, the, the super, er, excuse me, the principal of St. Patrick's. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to Park Board. Two, request to submit the dredging permit application to the DNR for dredging the St. Croix River near the seawall. Who's going to do that? Chuck? I, I will you actually, yeah. Um, we have a problem next to the seawall. It's very shallow. There's a lot of sediment, some rocks, and it's hard for boats to, uh, to be able to dock up next to the seawall. And what this is, <clears throat> it's a permit uh, that uh, the, the DNR, it's an application for a permit that the DNR will review. And the uh, cost is $500, which we uh, recommend comes out of the boat mooring fund. And it's a, non, it's a refundable uh, $500 if they decide that that's something that can't be done. So um, it, it seems to be a concern of a lot of boaters that they cannot, uh, you know, access the part, you know, part next to the seawall because of the depth there. So I, I will move that we uh, um, approve the recommendation of, uh, of the park board. Uh, I'll second that. I have a question. It talked about uh, in here when the dredging was to occur that it was to be put, uh, where is it now? The residue was to be put up on the shoreline. It would have to be hauled away. That's correct. Yeah, because the shoreline, obviously, we're just in the middle of rebuilding right. the shoreline. Right. Yeah, it, it, could, it could be moved to uh, one of the beaches or, you know, some other, some other location. Uh, when that point in time comes, but the key right now is just to to see if it's something that they'll allow us to do. Right. And from there we can. Then we get to details later. The details yeah. later. On that. Was there any discussion of how often you would have to dredge because that seawall uh, is the terminus of a very large stormwater runoff pipe, and that's that's it. I just mentioned silt going into Lake Valley. That's what's causing this is silt coming down that pipe. And so this would be an ongoing thing. It will fill up again. Well, when did we dredge it last? I don't know. Oh, been years. Yeah. I mean, not in my well over twenty years, I think. So. So is that the answer to your question? Twenty years from now. <laughs> it, it, well, we, let's plan that out. Yes, yeah. it's fine. Um, we've, I mean, we've also had a lot of, lot of sediment coming from when when the park floods, and then it brings mm -hmm. the sediment back into the over the wall. Betty, mm -hmm. it coupled with what you're saying. So. Money. <laughs> Well, if we if we get the uh, the okay, we can probably put that in the 2009 2009 budget, which is would be a capital project, which is something that uh, we can do, hopefully. Although we're going back to a two percent increase <coughs> overall uh, in our regular budget for 2009, but the capital projects have a little more uh, leadway, correct? So let's cross that when we get it, and if we don't have the money, then we can't do it. Right. Uh, th this does beg the question, how long is the permit good for? Well, they'll tell us. Right. It's the, it, it'll take them a few months to review it. Huh? Does it? What is it usually? Five years? Two years? What? The last one we got was two years. That's all right. Fine. Um, also, I don't know that this would necessarily impact the levy because... This would be paid for by the boat mooring fund, not general taxation. Right. It could be, yeah. Could oh. be. If there's enough there. And I see a questionable look there on Ms. Finance. But we'll look into that, okay? I think we should uh, see if it can be done. Do we have a motion and a second? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. In regards to that permit, we have another issue down in Long Pond where a huge stormwater pipe comes from Pond Number Five, which is up off of Haven Street. We had concerns and issues with that area being also filled up with sand. Would that be possible to get um, that application, or to see if we can look at that site also? Yeah, I don't see why not. It's a dredging permit, so I mean, good suggestion. Yeah. Saying, you know, as long as we got an application and a permit, maybe we could look at that site. But, also. Uh, I think we could, Tom. The DNR is very much against silt going into the river, mm -hmm. right? And be the same situation. Maybe get them both when for five hundred dollars. Well, that's what you're thinking. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> you want to add that to your motion or not? I yes. I will okay, so amend the, the motion. Okay. With the seconder. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Update on projects. Chuck. Well, I just wanted to make mention that uh, the site, site grading for the, the lakefront wall project uh, will be completed tomorrow. It's the time of the year. Uh, it won't be, we won't, we're, we're waiting on the paving till next spring, but the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, turf establishment will happen uh, next week and then the project will be finished up next spring. Next spring. The, the bituminous as well as the, uh, the pervious pavers that are going to be along the existing wall. If we have another flood, do you expect that uh, we're going to have to redo that whole uh, area? No, everything's been backfilled, and I understand that. But the that, water goes up over into that backfill, right? That is correct. And uh, as far as you know, the past, we we've been in contact with both the Corps and the DNR, and and they they've been involved in these discussions. We're not concerned about. In general, there's, there's there's it can be broken down into three different areas. You have the existing seawall up to that to that seat wall, that first wall, and that right now is compacted gravel with some um, some P rock where those previous papers are going to go. That should stay in place, no problem. Okay. Then you have the Second. between between the two new walls, and that that is uh, black dirt is there, and that's below the uh, the 884 contour, the the ordinary high water. Okay. And and then you have above the second wall, which is above the ordinary high water. And so what we're looking at doing is, um, because it's too late for sod, to uh, put down some hydro seed in those in those uh, those grassy areas, along with a um, with a tack of fire. Well, you're using that word that. ordinary, and I'm talking about extraordinary. That's correct. Flood. Area. So we're doing whatever you know. We're doing everything that's practical at this point, and we don't. You know, it's not going to erode away and, and okay. cause grave concern. So what's the worst case scenario? We got a high water flood. We're going to lose the black dirt, or is that it? Uh, we'll have to touch up the black dirt. We might have to, you know, take off. Uh, you know, just kind of take off. Uh, if there's any contamination of that, the gravel, we'll just have to take a little bit of that out. I don't. I don't expect more than a. You know, thousand dollars of correction work next spring, as far as that goes. Okay. Any other questions on update on project? I do real quick on number six. You say the signal work to be completed this week on Cooley Eleventh. Does that mean you're going to take the tape off those signs and it's going to work? And the lights, turn lights. Uh, we will not open up that th that third triple left until the overhead. The sign is as well. No, oh, Cooley. Oh, Cooley and Eleventh. Uh, yes, and when I when I did that update, I had a conference the last three days of last week, and so I did it on Tuesday. Uh, I've been out of the office. I don't believe that work's been done yet. I anticipated it to be done on Friday, and it hasn't. And so I haven't received a, an update from the electrician doing it. So okay. as soon as that's done, yes, to answer your question. But I'm, I'm not 100% sure of their schedule at this point. Anyone else? Thank you. Let's go old business proposal for fire department fire fighter pay policy. Chief. Yes, after consulting with the city attorney, uh, we got the language down so that we feel that the policy is clear and concise. <clears throat> uh, basically, the purpose for the policy we have none right now. It's all been left up to the discretion of the chief. This further defines when and where and how the the folks will get their stipend. Um, I, I recommend that uh, policy be adopted. And so, what change are you suggesting? R right, right now, there's no. Um, right now, there's no. Um, it's left up to the chief as to when the call is a call. Okay. Uh, this policy now will say after this second page, it will be a, a stipend call. Um, the other change in this is the one to go that uh, says when it goes to hourly, and that would be in the time of an emergency or a disaster, um, and that has to do with uh, FEMA guidelines in that. Uh, that's important to uh, spell out. So you before that you were handling it. Verbally, right. now you've got a, a 
procedure that's in writing. Right. Correct? Exactly. Okay. It's it's uniform. Everybody can understand this. And um, just wanted to make sure the TV audience right. understood that change. Okay. Need a motion. Move to adopt the new pay policy for fire, and uh, it also impacts EMS. By the way. Second. Yep. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion is carried. New business, 2008 Appropriation Ordinance for Municipal Operations, Ordinance Number 16-07. Need to suspend the rules. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Need a motion to adopt, amend, whatever. Well, I, before we get to that, if we may, I, I have a, a proposal I'd like to throw by everybody here real quick um, to see if uh, something we might be interested in. I think it's um, <clears throat> important. I've been trying to figure out a way to how we can, with our budget constraints, get in our police, police squad on the streets uh, to augment our, our, our patrols. And uh, trying to look at some ways that we can fund this without impacting you know, additional uh, cost of the budget and talking with uh, Betty and Chief Atkinson and and some others um, there's some funding sources out there that I think that we could look at to make this happen uh, one one funding source would be to reduce our legal costs our budget of re legal costs from 116,000 to 80,000 and then talking with uh, Betty I think that that'd be a conservative amount that we could be able to do that which would be a budget savings of $36,000 uh, we have an we have thirty-six thousand dollars in uh, unused police payroll for two thousand and seven that we could transfer over. Uh, there's a part unfilled part-time secretary, uh, which has a salary of thirteen thousand dollars for a budget for two thousand and eight that we could use. And uh, Chief Atkinson has indicated that he's not going to uh, partake in the city health plan, which would save the city twenty thousand dollars for a total of one hundred five thousand dollars in potential uh, funding sources. Uh, it seems to me in, in discussions that the best way to add a, add a uh, uh, another squad on the street is to establish an assistant chief position, which would um, free up the sergeants to uh, to uh, <clears throat> to uh, make that patrol happen. And if we did a half year funding this year, so beginning June first of two thousand eight, the the cost of that would be approximately fifty five thousand dollars. Um, a couple other objectives would be to uh, promote the detectives to sergeants. Um, that would have, again, beginning June 1st of 2008, would have a budget or a uh, funding impact of $8,000. And if we wanted to even go further, I think it'd be, it's important that we establish the crime prevention officer narcotics position uh, to handle multi, you know, uh, housing issues and also uh, so we have narcotics investigations in our city. Again, beginning June 1st of 2008, that would have a funding impact of about forty thousand dollars for a total of one hundred three thousand. I throw it out there. I think it's money that that we could, you know, move around to uh, at least, at a minimum, uh, get another squad on the street, and that's uh, what I would like to see happen. Let's let's look at the possible action uh, that you've got in that second paragraph, establishing an assistant chief position for fifty-five thousand. Do you agree with that figure, Betty? Half year. And just sort of a whole thing, we have to look at this is what we've been doing for 2008, but how does it impact 2009? Well, that immediately goes to twice that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So you agree with all these figures, or these figures came from you? We also have to remember next year um, projected tax increases around four hundred thousand um, dollars. That's based on capturing the tip value that they're going to allow that the state will allow us to capture next year. So we have four hundred thousand, two hundred sixteen thousand dollars taken up of the four hundred, and and we go back to a two percent. Two thousand seven level because that's what they're going to be offering. Well, I think the thing you have to consider is that we're proposing no increases or no hires for any 
staff members in our budget today. Correct? The only ones that are getting any uh, increases are the police department. I have a um, I have a problem with the premise of this because the very first statement is that we will reduce legal costs in 2008 to 80 thousand um, dollars. I don't think that we have any control over that. It would be very much like me as chairman of the Public Works Committee saying, "Well, we're uh, we're going to reduce the snowfall, so we don't have to plow as much." We have no control over our, when we are going to be hit with legal costs. We can't say we're going to spend only 80000 We spent $47,000 just having Catherine here and uh, running uh, legal expenses for um, uh, court. municipal court, yeah. which is half of this $80,000 is just for municipal court. That costs forty grand a year, $39,000. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say that we would be foolhardy to commit monies to people's careers to hire people uh, on a premise that, well, we're going to have this money when, in fact, we may not. Mm -hmm. Because all we need is another, uh, you know, court action by a dismissed police officer, which is what we had this past year. Mm -hmm. Or we need an, another court action having to do with uh, uh, something else here in Hudson that happened in 2006. And we're not going to be able to save any money. I mean, we do not control that. I, I agree with you, Scott. Um, that's that's correct. That those are possibilities that could happen. Um, I think there is there is some money potentially that we could use if that does happen. That we could take off contingency or, or maybe a fund balance to cover an instance like that. If 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 the costs were to uh, you know go over eighty thousand, um, I also think that we can can control our costs more internally by um, uh, maybe. I like to see a policy change where just the mayor or in the absence of the mayor, the president of the council, or a, or a council directive that, that, dic, that um, dictates who can, who can call uh, the city attorney for a specific issue. Um, that way, you know, instead of you know, me calling her for something, or, or Lee, or Alan, or, or Scott, or the case may be, um, you know, we have more of a, a uniform approach. I think that would reduce our cost quite a bit. And uh, yeah, you're right, you can't, you can't predict what will happen. Um, but in that case, I think we, we do have some extra, not extra funds, but funds we could tap into if, if, if need be. Well, the second part of your proposal, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be what uh, people are saying I am in the paper. Uh, I think that the three things that you're talking about there should be decided uh, by the new chief, which we'll have probably in less than a month. He's the one that should be talking about the uh, assistant chief and the promoting the detectives and establishing a CPO narcotics position. So I, I think that's, that's not just micromanaging, that's macromanaging. It's more than we should be doing. Well, but at the same time, um, we've had a couple of chiefs who have suggested this is the way we go, and I think we need to, ha to somehow make the money available to you know, help augment our staff, which we all know needs to be done. And so I think this is the way we can do it without um, without uh, an additional tax burden. Yeah, but you're taking half of the uh, the proposed increase for 2009 in your proposal. I'd like to interject that you know we have to do something. Obviously, we've had uh, constituents, we've had people come to the meeting and tell us, "Please, we need more police." If this is a viable approach to free up certain amount of money to start this thing, then I would agree with this. So you don't you don't want to wait till we get a new chief, huh? I think two chiefs ahead of them have already put something forward. I think there's obviously a problem that needs to be addressed down there. If if we pass this budget tonight, as we're talking talking about doing, is there anything that precludes the new chief in two weeks from coming back and asking for a budget amendment to make this happen? No. Exactly my point. Did you have a comment? Well, yeah, I do have a comment on the legal cost. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, I, I think that's unrealistic. This year was over $116,000. I think things can be put in place to control it, but in terms of 
access to the city attorney. Frankly, it's not, I don't get a lot of calls from council members. Um, some staff calls can be screened better, but if this year's budget was, or expenditures were over 116,000, just to say, well, we're going to reduce it to 80, it just, the costs don't go away. Um, I just offer that as, sure, I just, it's just not money that's going to appear out of nowhere. We still have an ongoing appeal with the police officer dismissal. We have two tax appeals going on right now. I mean, I don't manufacture these things, they just happen. And so to think that it's just going to not happen, it could be, but I think to budget for that and spend, commit funds elsewhere is um, shaky. And I agree that uh, we have had some unusual circumstances this year, but but historically the the legal costs have been, you know, below that number, eighty thousand number. For what I've seen in the, in the we had did some history on that, so I don't I don't think it's not unrealistic. Can things pop up and and happen? Yeah, that's that can happen. That's correct for one year. Well, I like the first part of your proposal better than the second part, <laughs> from my own opinion. Well, like I said, this is a, a goal is to, uh, I, I really believe we need to have another squad on the street um, to better serve our community. I think public safety and police protection should be, you know, number one on our issue, just to, if not, you know, along with fire and EMS. And You know, we uh, created a lieutenant, uh, what, two years ago, which was supposed to uh, do a lot of overtime, and uh, that lieutenant is still there, and uh, basically I think he's under utilized and under use and uh, I'm looking for that new chief to take a look at uh, reallocation of existing manpower and to come in with some uh, maybe amendment to the existing uh, uh, budget uh, under his uh, recommendation so Paul um, so let's assume we can't uh we can't control our legal costs by that 36000 yep. uh, Could we delete item three there, which would be the uh, CPO uh, narcotics position? Yeah. Uh, that, that, kind of, that would kind of balance that out, uh, where we would go with the uh, assistant chief position and promote the detectives to sergeant. Uh, so it reduces it by uh, $40,000, and our annual cost goes down by 80000 so we're down closer to 120,000 versus taking half of the next year's 2009 budget mm -hmm. increase. If Why we, are we establishing an assistant chief for a chief that isn't even here yet? I got you. I guess this is, I, I guess from my perspective, it was uh, brought up from uh, our former chief. Uh, one of his recommendations was that, and it seemed to make sense to me at that point. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't have a problem with waiting until the new chief comes in. Well, uh, for him to review that's it. What I'd like the to reason do. for the assistant chief, of course, is that it's the most cost-effective way to get another squad on the street because it frees up the other sergeants to to get on. But you've got a lieutenant that's doing that today. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily the case, Jack. So um, then, then the previous chief and the acting chief is not utilizing that individual. I, I don't know about that, to be honest with you. So, but I, I do know that this is a solution. Uh, it's just a matter of moving some money around, and I think that, uh, that we can do it. And I will make a motion that we adopt the uh, 2008 budget with this uh, caveat um, tied ooh, to it. Ooh, I got, <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Whoa. Uh, you're in the middle of a motion process, and if I could ask, if we could pause for just a second because I have an amendment that Betty and I have discussed and, and Public Works has discussed, which I think is, shows a very, has a very immediate need, something I'm gonna strongly it suggest that you do, and it's only $20,000. We need to add $20,000 to the Public Works budget for 2008 as a contingency fund because Betty right now, under our current restrictions, has trouble paying our electric bill. And Betty, perhaps you could explain it. I know you can explain it better than I can. Would you please come up to the podium? Mm -hmm. 
when we um, discussed the budget, we um, based the 2008 budget on the 2007 budget with the actual increases that we had to do for um, the police salaries that have been negotiated already, um, adding uh, $3.50 more to the ambulance per population for the ambulance, 40000 more for the fire department, some of the key essential things that we had to do, but everything else is based on a 2007 budget. Well, it's gotten to the end of 2007, and I'm scrambling for money in the public works to try to pay the electric bills. And one of the other bills that's sitting right now and can't get paid is for the inspection services on the landfill. We are required to have four inspections a year, and right now we budgeted $5,000 for 2007. It's already $7,000. And um, so 2008, I'm not going to be able to make that budget either. So based with that information, I had called Scott because it got to the point where um, I'm making budget amendments on a regular basis, probably three a day um, that I put through the system to try to get everything to operate. And so I had called him and requested that he ask his board to put in this request. I know we have no funding sources for it, so I analyzed the fund balance. We have about approximately 130000 of unrestricted fund balance at this point and just said, can we use it as a contingency? Does it mean we have to use it? If it doesn't get used, it goes back or gets carried over to the next year. But at this point, it's getting to the problem. If they have a transmission problem at Public Works on one of their um, street things, we will not be able to fix it, and that, that will be out of service. So if we have a contingency budget to hit some of those things that they have problems with, that's what I was requesting. Thank you, Betty. We're about to go into the snow plowing season. We're really going to need to be able to fix any equipment breakdown that occurs. And I did not mean to interrupt your process. Oh. I just wanted people here on the council, the council members, to know that there is a, there will be at least one other request for money. Well, I will amend my motion to include the twenty thousand uh, dollar public works. No, I, no, I'll, please see. just make your. I interrupted oh, your motion oh, as it was made. I'm more happy to do that. To, uh, to we didn't get a second. Well, now you're proposing one. So, do you, do you well, we well, well, I don't want to interrupt, interrupt this process, yet. but yes, I did. Um, no, he interrupted me. He didn't really ask for a second yet. Uh, yeah, we, we we have a motion without a second right now. I'll give you a second. Let's, let's so, which one? one? Okay. Mr. Well, Morris, Morris, he, he made the motion. Mr. Rodmacher. Yeah, the motion as made by Paul does not include any money for public works. Well, I'll amend my motion to do so. Uh, Twenty thousand dollars contingency fund. Is that okay with the second? Or? Yeah. And the source of that funding is twenty thousand dollars would yeah, come from fund balance. Do. From what? From fund, the fund balance. Fund balance. But Paul, I, I agree with Al on uh, number three, and not really a funding for the uh, narcotics position, and then and going back to legal for that. That's that's fine. Discussion. Okay. So, so Paul, uh, you know, I, I'm supportive of uh, the first two items, but uh, I think Mayor Bro did bring up a good point about the fact that maybe we should uh, wait for the new chief. Does that make any sense to do that for you or when the new chief comes in and maybe he will have a different recommendation? He can look at it, yep. bring a proposal, we can amend it, and I don't see any reason for moving on a ghost chief that isn't here yet and making proposals for him when we know probably less than what his experience is going to bring to uh, the police department. Could we hear from um, somebody in the recommendations from anyone in the police department, their thoughts on how this would benefit us? I, I guess I'd like to hear that because the um, I, I agree with your position. I see where we're trying to get the funding from. Um, I'm really interested in what some of these guys have to say about and also, so we at this position, we can establish a new position tonight without talking to the Police and Fire Commission. No. We this cannot. Is this is just funding. This is just funding. Funding, funding for, but they're the ones that. So we're funding a position that doesn't exist yet? That's right. Yeah. But they don't know if they want it yet. I mean, they haven't requested it. They have a hard enough time just picking a chief. <laughs> so how can we fund a position that doesn't I, I'm, Excellent sorry, point. I'm Excellent just, I'm just point. asking because I don't know. Well, I think it's important that we dedicate funds so that, so that uh, these things can happen if the chief so desires. But he can do that by coming back with an amended. Well, will the, money, will the money still be there? I, I fear that it won't be. Well, so using your particular yeah. approach, how can it 
not be there. <laughs> okay, let, let me ask another question. Items 2, 3, and 4, which are transfer 2007 unused police payroll, transfer 2008 unfilled part-time secretary salary, and number four was no um, health insurance for Chief Atkinson, uh, Acting Chief Atkinson. Betty, what happens to those dollars in this current proposal? In the current proposal as is, um, unless you would designate the 36000 um, that's going to be projected to be left over in the police department, we'll go back into fund balance. Fund balance, okay. The 20000 would remain as unused funds in the 2008 budget. Okay. And the 13000 if they would not hire that position, would remain in the 2008 budget. It would stay with the police in 2008? Okay, so the um, so the thirteen thousand stays with the police for two thousand eight. The two, the twenty thousand stays with the police for two thousand eight. The thirty six thousand would go into fund balance, which could be transferred later at any time. Right. I think that's maybe Nancy pulled that road. What? what was that? I, uh, so do I. We're, we're establishing uh, Cause, cause positions it, that aren't even uh, in our bailiwick. Later when and she the, the final sheet. And also the fund balance could be higher, so we could actually do, if we choose to, we could do something different here. More. Exactly. Whatever the chief wants. But it's up to you. I, well, I think the important thing is that we get another officer on the street is right. what is what my objective that's, is. That's my goal. Yeah. Uh, how we do that and what positions we create or how we do it, whether we have another patrol officer, mm -hmm. if, if that's going to help do that. And maybe that's a cheaper solution. And I, but Would making this de decision tonight make this happen faster than waiting for uh, a new no. chief? Because he still has to the, has to go through police and fire to approve a new position, and it still has to be All approved by a new chief. Hmm. We can still take an alternate or approach by letting the new chief come in and coming to us for an amended budget, which the monies are still there, and let him be part of that total package that he brings back to the police department. That's my feelings. And then we can propose to the Police and Fire Commission, uh, or he can, the, uh, the recommendations that he has. I hate taking away from a manager opportunities when they come into a position to structure their organization. Well, exactly. I mean, that's, I, I, I like this, I love the idea of coming up with the funds to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that we've done. Okay, well, I, that's fine. I just want to make sure that that's established, that uh, um, that this is something we can achieve, because I just I don't want this to be, you know, not talked about, because I think it's very important that we we act on something to get another officer on the street as soon as possible. And um, uh, I guess whether we do that tonight or we we wait a month or so, it probably doesn't matter so much. But it just seems like. Now's as good as time as any. But. Paul, can I ask a question? Do you want to take a vote on your motion as it stands, or do you? It seems like there's some yeah. concurrence already through the discussion. Would you like to amend or revise your motion to just cover the twenty thousand dollars contingency for public works? Um. We're all in, in agreement. No, no I you. agree with you. It, it, I mean, it's just well, we can have a vote on your motion. No, no, if you want. no, no I, I understand what you're saying. I, I think that uh, it seems um, probably best to reconsider this at another time. So I will withdraw my motion and uh, uh, move that we adopt the 2008 budget with the $20,000 um, contingency fund for public works. Okay, with the seconder. Yeah, I commend you for taking that. Uh, Approach. And as Betty indicated, that 33 is there, regardless. Well, and that's of, yeah. right. that's just what I want to make sure that the money would be and there, and that's that's the most important thing. And then at the end of the year, and we can do she can let you know exactly what. It's 36, is. isn't it? That 20 to the 13. 30 yeah, 13. Okay. okay, 13, and then 36 okay. above it would be, or more yeah. or less, depending on what Betty comes up with. Okay. At the end of the year. Okay. All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Now we need a, a motion on the budget with that uh, addition. I mean, I did. did. That was okay, it. Okay, yeah, we, we got it all. Now we approve the budget right. as it stands okay. with the $20,000. Now we're all in agreement when the new chief comes in, if his recommendations are basically the proposal that we're looking at this evening, that we will find the money for him uh, to do that. Is that what the council is basically agreeing I, I, to? I, I think, though, Jack, if he says, I don't want an assistant chief, I want another patrol officer. Exactly. I, that yeah. We'd still. But yeah. listening to him after but, he analyzes uh, hit the needs of the police department in his through his eyes. Correct. Could I ask you? But one patrol officer is not going to make the difference. You have to be able to staff a whole, sure. a whole okay. rotation. But okay. we'll let him that, make that, that decision. item has been discussed. Can I ask our attorney, uh, do we need to formally mention the ordinance number at 16-07? Should we have done that in this, in this motion? No, I think it's understood. Okay. I think I said I that when we okay. first uh, sure that we started that. Yeah. I mean, slip over something. Has it that the appropriations ordinance Okay, thank you. Thank you all for <coughs> that reasonable uh, conclusion. Let's go to the request of Mark Christofferson to amend municipal code regarding Class B beer license requirements. And I want to hear from Betty as it relates to the monies we've spent on that particular ordinance to date and any other pertinent monetary information she may have. When I was analyzing the legal expenses for the last two years, I was trying to figure out where is the money being spent from the 40000 that we spent in municipal court to the approximately 16000 to have Catherine here with our meetings, and then went into the ordinance um, situation where we spent $8,000 one year of, of her looking at our ordinances to $16,000 another year looking at our ordinances to that was going through the signs and going through other things. The liquor licenses came up with an $8,000 expenditure for her to look through liquor licenses. While I was looking at that, one of them that came up that will be brought up again tonight had to do with the Gulf Link situation where we were looking at amending the ordinance. So I put those costs together and for her to look at that for us, it cost the city $1,900. Um, I don't think we ever got any farther than just saying that we were at the situation that we were before. And one of the recommendations that Paul and I were talking about when we were looking at legal is maybe when we go into these things, we bring it to finance, kind of get an estimate of what the cost will be before we proceed. And so there was uh, approximately $1,900 that we spent on, on looking at that particular ordinance. Um, the other thing that the mayor was amending or <clears throat> referring to is that at this point, um, Gulf Links owes the city quite a chunk of money. And um, so um, that's a bill that's almost a year old at this point. And Specifically before, what? His personal property taxes. How much? $2,600. Okay. And before any liquor license can be even uh, renewed in the city, all bills have to be taken care of. So that was one of the situations. So. Betty, could I suggest that that is uh, the last part of your discussion would be for uh, a, a time should such an application actually be tendered and would not be part of our discussion tonight? Sure. We're discussing whether or not to amend uh, the city code tonight. <clears throat> We had a we had this before the the house last year I believe. Mm -hmm. the vote was four to two. You open that door and we're going to have several requests for whatever pool halls, uh, all different kinds of uh, situations that are not. Un Can I finish? Uh, that we're not uh, basically uh, opening uh, that uh, license to today. Well, in, in order to open this up for discussion, I'm going to make a motion that we deny this request so that second? we can then discuss it. I'll second that. Okay, discussion. Um, I think that we, as you were about, as you were alluding to, Mr. Mayor, for the city to amend the city code to suit one person, or one business establishes a most unsavory precedent that would cost us a big chunk of that $80,000 in legal fees for next year. Um, 
and I'd like an opinion from our uh, attorney about cr changing city ordinance to suit one person. Well, you're not changing the city ordinance to suit one person. The situation arises because of a particular situation, but you have to understand, and that's why it's important that your ordinance will apply citywide, and there's going to be, I mean, when we went through the last, this the last time, um, you have to think of all the situations in which it may apply because it's not going to be just for one business. Um, it's even if you look at the ordinance, the way it was proposed last fall, um, it defines recreation premises, you know, to include several other different kinds because you cannot adopt an ordinance that's only going to be single purpose, single business legislation. You just can't do that. That's part of the problem that this situation presents. And so the ordinance is prepared last fall was broader than <coughs> the single business that's made the request. Yeah. And exactly my point, that you would open up to a whole new class of, of businesses. Yes. I believe that in the past, the city, past city councils of Hudson have in their wisdom chosen to require that people who have this kind of license serve food, for instance, so that they're just not just, <coughs> not just bars where people go and drink that they must provide some other service to the community. And I believe that's a wise choice on their part, and I think that we should continue that. Any other comments? Well, I think after we, we had a couple meetings discussion on this, if I remember correctly. And I, I, I guess I would agree with Mr. O'Malley. After all that discussion, all the time we spent on this, I don't feel that we need to amend our municipal code. Any other comments? As a new person on the council, I, I believe that he had a license at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lost so, it. And council. It was issued in error. It was just the license itself did not meet the code requirements and it should not have been issued. And then that was discovered. We had to notify the business owner that he could not get that license renewed. The license itself was void because it was issued in violation of city code. Does anyone on the city council believe that this is a uh, business that we don't want in the city or is a uh, negative to our city? Well, I don't think it has to do with just this business. We're talking that's what we're talking about. We're talking about no, we're no. talking. That's why it's real important to make that distinction that we're not talking about a single business. We're Correct. talking about amending the ordinance or you're talking about to allow class B beer licenses to be issued to recreation premises. Correct. So and we still have a right to issue those or not issue those, correct? Well, you have to have um, uh, you have to have a reason so that if they meet the um, requirements of the ordinance, then you have to have some kind of public health, safety, welfare, either parking or, you know, effect on the neighborhood, that type of reason. If you're opening it up and saying, yes, if you're a recreation premises, you can have a beer license, um, they're not entitled to it just because it's in your ordinance, but you have to have some articulable reason as to why they would not. Can, can you control it. that by the number that you issue? Or we, set, we set a number of that we're going to say we're going to issue one license in this classification? Uh, we, that's not an option we looked at. Um, the quota right now. Um, I think this falls I, under class B, doesn't it though? Well, yeah, we have quotas for class B in general. I haven't seen sub quotas for certain t different classifications of class B. I just, we haven't, I haven't seen that. And I think the, just to, I looked back at my file mm -hmm. and it actually was considered in June and then twice in November. And um, it's really, uh, the council at that time tried to assess, okay, why did we, why did we have the restaurant requirement? And I think it was determined that that was an atmosphere type of decision, that this is what we, we know if people are going into a restaurant, they're eating food, 
they usually don't stay longer to consume alcohol. They eat their food and leave, and that those types of operations have don't have the same problems that taverns, other operations where people may just sit and drink alcohol. We so, don't have a tavern in this town, do we? Yeah. Well, bars that just aren't, don't serve, that have a Class A liquor license. Who is that? Who would that be? Well, the Budges. Budges. They serve food there. Yeah. Devil serves food. There is no requirement. There's no requirement that they food. be a restaurant. Right. Class B license has a requirement yeah. to serve yeah. food. However, if we were to change this to allow any recreational place to forget about the food mm -hmm. and just serve the, the beer, and somebody uh, were to come to us tomorrow and want to open up a, um, a pool hall or a biker bar, um, you wouldn't be able to stop them unless they were not in conformance with one of the five, and there are only five ways that you can, you can stop that issuance under the state law of Wisconsin. And you just alluded to those, Catherine. Uh, lack of parking or um, some other uh, problem, uh, problem with uh, the person's past history, whatever, um, you would get, su we would get sued. We would start spending those legal fees for next year right now because we would get sued by people who want similar liquor licenses and we are talking tonight as though we can say no, but you can't. Well, I think you can if you have a limit that you establish in that well, category. That's to set say, by population. I don't, I think a city. Well, we haven't, all I can, we didn't look into that. Right. And that's another, but I think you need to, before you commit legal fees to looking into that, I think you need to decide, do you want to change? The other difficulty with recreation, restaurants easy, more than 50% of the, um, first it has to be licensed as a restaurant by the state and more, more than 50% of the um, revenues have to be food or non-alcohol. Recreation premises, that's broad and vague, and it's difficult to anticipate what types of businesses might package themselves as recreation. That's pool, that's video, that it's, it's really unknown what that might include. So that makes it more difficult to know what kind of additional businesses you're going to have coming to you asking for applications or licenses. The other thing that the council looked at is there's different laws in terms of underage persons on the premises for class B beer and recreation premises. And you have a situation there where it's less restrictive. And again, the council, you know, needed to decide at that time, are they comfortable with that when you're not certain what type of business is going to actually qualify for the license? It's just a whole lot harder to control. That, I think, was the what the council came down to. A restaurant, you know why people are there. They don't mm -hmm. stick around. Um, I'm just trying to kind of recreate the flavor of the discussion so that you either decide yes if you want to look at a, a different way of regulating it like the quota but don't commit legal fees to even looking at it if you're not comfortable with the whole idea of an undefined kind of recreation premises because then the quota doesn't matter I mean it does you're saying okay we'll only have three of these we're not sure what they will end up being but you have to be comfortable with having a license out there like that. And that was a difficulty I think the council had in the last time it was discussed. Catherine, isn't your, your um, proposed amendment very specific though, that the business has to be established when we're playing golf, indoor simulated golf, tennis, curling, ski jumping, or yachting? I mean, it's very specific. The only not? reason I did that, and don't call it my proposed amendment, <laughs> <laughs> because it's not my proposed amendment. Well, it was, and if you look back at my June memo, written. it was it was submitted only for discussion purposes, so you can see what an ordinance might look like. Um, that was an attempt to limit it, and I advised the council at that time that. Um, someone's going to come in and say, well, what's the rational basis for limiting it to just those? Why curling and why not exactly. some other type of similar recreation? And 
there's no good answer to that. The only answer we had at that time was, well, there's some kind of very unique permit under state law that's issued to country clubs in those areas. Nonprofits. Nonprofits, Nonprofits and yeah. only in areas when, where they don't have class B beer licenses. So it was an attempt to limit it, but I advised the council at that time, I don't know how well that would hold up. And it certainly wouldn't keep other people from coming in and asking, why treat me differently? And you would have to answer those questions. And pay a legal fee every time. Well, and, and, and I, I think that in our discussion that we have a motion to deny, but if somebody comes back and wants to look into it, then they're going to have to pay for the legal fees for any searches that that our attorney does. They're going to pay for it, not us. We already spent $1,900, and this is the third time we've had, or fourth time we've had this discussion, and each time we've uh, denied it. Is there, there is no, is there any reason why, if there was a Class A license out there, they couldn't apply for it in this location? No, there's no reason no. why not. Class A is, is off sale. Oh, I meant uh, class intoxicating, class, class B, B intoxicating yeah. liquor. Yeah. She missed. Yeah, I misspoke. Well, but the intoxicating yeah. one the that doesn't have any limitations, really. So if Golf Links wanted to be non-profit, it would be okay? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not with them. <laughs> I think they'd still have to qualify as a club. Any other, I, may I call the question, please? I think we've discussed this. Yeah, I was going to say, any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Oh. Three to three? I say no. I say yes to denying it. I think you're opening a can of worms. Okay. Um, we don't have a closed session. Uh, we have a communications recommendation to the mayor. I had an adoration letter uh, to, the, to the paper, and uh, I'm getting to the point after 14 years. I don't care what they say about me. Just get the name right. <laughs> uh, communications and items for future agendas. Uh, any altar person? Yes. Um, I would like to wish everybody in Hudson a very happy Thanksgiving holiday. You don't need too much. Yeah. Anyone else? That would never happen. <laughs> City attorney? Nothing here. City administrator? Just a quick thanks to Betty, especially Betty, and to the rest of the staff for all their work on the budget. I mean, everybody really had to dig deep this year and you know look for places to help us save money. So. And it's ongoing. It's ongoing, but especially Betty, because I was working a little more on that insurance issue, Betty picked up some of the stuff I normally do. So. We owe a lot to everyone on our staff. Okay. Speaking of that, Nancy received a certification. Oh, yes. Municipal I'm sorry. clerk. Nancy that should be brought up. a certified municipal clerk by the International hey. Institute. Certified. Hey. 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 She, uh, thanks for bringing that up, Al. I was going to bring yep. that up. She um, went to three years of the clerk institute over at Green Bay and met all the requirements. So she got that in the last couple of days, correct, Nancy? You got yes. the certification. So congratulations. congratulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried.